A very warm welcome to the Zest for Health community project Healthier Together. This is week one out of six. My name is Christelle Page. I'm a registered nutritionist and I'm here to help and support you to rediscover your zest for life as you feel happier, healthier and more energetic. So we want to help you to improve your health at home, increase your energy, have you feeling good and maybe lose a few pounds or a couple of inches around your waist. And all it's going to take is 15 minutes each week. And this is what we're going to cover in week one. So the primary topic for this session is as your relationship with food change during lockdown. We're going to cover three various sections. So the first one is eat for health. So have you become a refrigerator or maybe a cereal snacker? And as we are under stress, lots of us are reaching out for the snacks, but we're going to see why constant grazing is actually not helping. Or maybe it's about your kids. Do you find that your children keep on asking you for snacks all the time and they keep on foraging for food in the fridge? The next section is habits for health. So how to establish balance and reduce cravings. And a little spoiler for you here, it's not all about willpower. And finally, um, cook for health. So I'm going to share with you two delicious family-friendly snacks to help you keep balanced. But first, let's take a little quiz and see how you're going to do on those 10 questions. So are you feeling more tired than usual? Does your mood go up and down? Are you finding it hard to concentrate? Do you still feel tired 20 minutes after getting up in the morning? Or maybe you even struggle to get up in the morning. Do you need coffee or something sweet to get you started? Or keep going and give you energy? Are you experiencing energy slumps during the day? Do you often crave food? Are you gaining weight? Are you mealtimes erratic? And are you snacking more often? So quick check, how many of those apply to you? So let's be honest, and if you score more than three or four, we need to get to work. So this week, we are going to focus actually on breaking the patterns and cycles in order for you to take back control of your eating habits. And a survey by King's College University, which actually was done during the previous lockdown, had some really interesting results to share. They found out that one in three were eating more food, one in five were drinking more alcohol, one in three were sleeping less well, and one in two were feeling more anxious. So you're not on your own. This is a population-wide situation. And, you know, sometimes you might just think that the other week of crazy eating and drinking is a small price to pay for keeping your sanity during COVID. The reality is just the time has come for us to redress the balance. So let's have a look at the reasons why. So why does this happen? So we spend more time than ever at home and you're more likely just to walk past your fridge or your food cupboard now than you were before. And each time you're going just to mindlessly just grab something to eat. We under stress and that's undeniable. So we know that during periods of heightened stress, actually our relationship with food is going to be impacted. Our routine has been turned upside down. So before the lockdown, we would just have breakfast at a certain time and leave for work or go to school at a certain time, uh, fit our lunch into our daily routine and have our evening meal when we came home. But actually, now that need for a fixed time routine has completely disappeared. We eat when we're bored and we eat because we're lonely. So there are so many reasons why we eat when we're not hungry. Boredom, stress, loneliness, they all play a part. And all the factors actually I'm showing you here adapt to the disruptive pattern that we may find ourselves in. So when we want to move away from an uncomfortable feeling, we may eat to distract ourselves with food and it makes us feel good for a short period of time. But that uncomfortable feeling, so let's call it stress because whatever the cause or the reason, the body experiences it as stress. It has a se uh, several effects on us and the body. So it will destabilize balance and trigger craving. So yes, it's um, stress and it's not you. It will tell you that you need more coffee, which triggers more craving. And, you know, you have to have that biscuit or maybe 12 with a coffee or your tea. And it tells you that actually you need the wine and it's not even six o'clock in the evening yet, but let's open the wine anyway, which triggers more craving because this time you really want this bowl of crisp and you're going to reach out for the salty snacks. Mm -hmm. All this snacking disturbs your sleep, which actually leaves you feeling hungry the next day. And you see your weight creeping up. And that gives you more reasons to snack because snacking will make you feel better, at least for a short period of time. 
and then you feel trapped into a um, revolving loop or roller coaster. So if you don't eat proper meals, your blood sugar level can spike and go on a roller coaster and you keep um, feeling that you need to eat something in order to stay happy, settle, focused or connected. So this week we are going to focus on breaking the cycle by flattening the blood sugar curve. So let me introduce you to the blood sugar roller coaster. So what we want actually is the green line, not the orange one. And each time you have those spikes in blood sugar that are represented by the little star above the orange line, they are caused by reaching out for the cookie jar, your favorite snack. And what we want to do is to flatten the curve. Have you heard something like that somewhere else? So what we want is just to bring down the orange line to the green dotted line or the, the green line. And we can do that by making different food choices. So by replacing your usual snack with something different, we can flatten the curve. And this is going to be a recurring theme during our sessions. So you'll see that by flattening the sugar curve, you're going to change your body biochemistry and reduce as well the strong messages from your brain that are driving you to reach for the fridge or the food cupboard. So let's look at the benefits of what a blood sugar um, curve that is flattened is going to give you. So you're going to feel happier and a bit better and you're going to have more energy, you're going to be less up and down and more positive. And this actually can happen very, very quickly, within days actually. You're going to sleep better, you're going to be more focused and you're going to have better concentration and maybe even better mood. And again, this is something that is noticeable very, very quickly. So let's see what we can do to address this. Uh, there are lots and lots of strategies for flattening the curve, but this week we're going to look at choosing different snack options to help you with this. So the key here is to include protein every time that you eat. So if we eat a snack that combines protein with carbohydrates, the blood sugar curve will be flattened. And this is because protein takes actually longer to digest and therefore will keep you fuller for longer. So this is a great way actually just to make a small um, change to start. And here are some ideas about food combination that will help. So you could have some natural yogurt with some fresh fruits and a handful of nuts, which is a great combo. So your protein is coming from the natural yogurt and the nuts. You could have some chopped up veggies with hummus and protein, with the protein coming from the chickpeas in the hummus. You could have an apple sliced up, which is each little slice um, spread with a little bit of uh, peanut butter or nut butter, which is really delicious. So your protein is coming from the nut butter. A couple of oat cakes with a smallish piece of cheese for your protein. So some really simple snack that will help you to balance your carbohydrates and your protein and help you to keep you full for longer and will flatten this blood sugar curve. So I also have a couple of delicious recipes for you to try. The first one is a black bean chocolate brownies and your protein is going to come from the black beans. And the second one is an almond and apricot energy bar. And again, the protein is coming from the, the almonds and the seeds. So what we want you to ask you to consider this week is actually what will you do differently to move your health forward? And I have a little challenge for you. So could you try to plan your meals for the next week ahead? So, or maybe the next two or three days or even the next day, that's a little start that will get you somewhere or include some protein snacks in the planning so i've given you some ideas here make it fun involve the household so involve the kids if that doesn't make you too stressed base it around the food that you already have to minimize your shopping see what different healthy snack can make rinse and repeat so we hope that you will take on board this new challenge to change your snacking habits and uh, that will help you to keep you actually um, away from the fridge and the food cupboard. So do let me know how you get on with this and I will post the recipes for you as well as a PDF. So what we'll be providing you over the next few weeks are some other mechanisms and small tiny habits that can build up together to make a big difference. Some additional helpful resources for you here. So you may want to listen to Dr. Chatterjee's podcast. Uh, that is directly actually relevant to the subject we've discussed this week. 
And it's all about what it takes to create a new habit and uh, how to make it stick. So you may be interested to know that actually creating the feeling of success and experiencing the benefits of what you're doing is what is going to make you habit sick and uh, wanting you to do it more. If you have any more questions or want more information, please do get in touch. My contact details are on this slide. So next week, the session is going to cover the mighty veggies and why they are so great, how to include more veggies in your diet. And I'm going to share with you some family-friendly dinners with lots of veggies. So I hope that you enjoyed today's session. Take care, have a great week, and see you same place, same time next week.